Hi, it's uh, Matt. I'm uh, back with another review. I went to see Rogue One, and honestly, I wasn't that impressed. Um, it was kind of a fun, enjoyable action movie in a lot of ways. Uh, and, and there were some things that I liked about it, but I came out of it thinking, that is awful. Uh, which was ki kind of an exaggeration, but but not too much. I mean, if you've seen or read uh, many critiques of the film, probably most of what I'm going to say is is familiar. Um, it it has significant problems. Uh, there's too much uh, there's too much fan service for one. There's no reason for us to see C three PO and R two D two. We don't really need another sassy robot. He kind of plays an important role in the in the in the screenplay for this, but he's not a necessary character. There's no reason uh, for Darth Vader to be in this. Um, he looks and sounds more convincing than either uh, Tarkin or Leia. But there's, again, there's there's no real need for him to be there. His his kind of castle on a volcano is bloody silly and straight out of a, a stupid fantasy film. And his final scene is, while it's awesome and it makes him intimidating and dangerous again for the first time in in many years, it's it's pointless and out of place and without the context of other films is it's like who is this guy what's he here for why are we seeing this now and, and why is he being framed like something really awesome and great uh so that's unnecessary as i say Leia and tarkin are both really unnecessary in fact restaging the beginnings of the final sequence uh, the beginnings of the, the opening sequence of A New Hope and constant mention of hope throughout the, the, the film, again, are kind of unnecessary. We know what the premise of this is going to be. There are also problems in that there are too many characters uh, that don't have enough to do. A lot of what they have to do is stupid and contrived. And we don't know enough about the characters. We never see them. We never see them interact. Um, so our, our central protagonist, uh, Jin Erso, we have approximately a couple of scenes, maybe amounting to a minute or two, with her and her father. And in that scene, he's basically saying, "Go and hide." So it, we don't feel much weight of, of separation between them. We don't see her growing up. We jump straight from her being sort of eight, nine, ten, straight to her being sort of early, mid-twenties. And nothing in between. So we don't know... We don't know her particularly as a person. We don't know what she believes. We don't know what her relationships are with other people. She doesn't appear to have any particular friends. Um, we, we, we don't know the root of her fighting abilities. We don't know why people would want to trust her as a leader. Um, we have no reason to, uh, to, th to think anything of her, other than she's the central character and this is a Star Wars movie. Uh, we know that she's got a mentor, uh, played by Forrest Whitaker. Now, he's, he's one place where it's evident that there must have been rewrites and reshoots. He's in... He's in two scenes. He's talked about a lot. We see him once. In fact, we see him twice once uh when it actually happens when he opens up the the the, 
the, the hiding place that, that Jin has gone to as a small child. We see that when it happens, we see it as a, or, or at least when she dreams it, and we see it later as a flashback. And the second time we see him is when she meets him as this uh, sort of big bad uh, resistance figure um, at his base, and his base is about to be destroyed, and everyone's escaping, and he goes, no, nah, I'm not running anymore, I'm, I'm just going to die here. And it's not even a, it's not even a sacrifice, There's n he's just like, yeah, I, I, I'm dead now. And there's no really serious attempt to, to stop him. So we never get to, to know him or what the nature of his relationship with Jin was, what his connection with her father Galen was. We have no understanding of any of this whatsoever. Uh, and, and so he's... It's a shame, I like Forrest Whitaker, but his character is utterly superfluous and tells us nothing. Um, and it, it's the same with a lot of characters. There are characters that are sort of interesting concepts. Uh, Donnie Yen's character, the uh, blind uh, guardian of the Jedi Temple, is good and actually does have a couple of decent scenes, although he's undeveloped. Uh, Jiang Wen is essentially a cool action figure with a big gun. Um, I mean, albeit that in in this case he's on the side of the rebellion, he's effectively this movie's uh, Boba Fett or Darth Maul or Captain Phasma in that he looks cool but is ultimately useless and does nothing and we know nothing about him. Uh, so... Uh, other characters uh, are pretty bland. Uh, Cassian Andor, I think he's called the Diego Luna character, is introduced as morally ambiguous and compromised and potentially interesting, but then just becomes kind of bland uh, character and really forced love interest at the end when there's no reason for them to be love interest at all uh, no desire for that, no need for it and it obviously goes nowhere because plainly spoilers, everyone dies uh, there are some decent performances in as much as you can get decent performances in it with, with characters that are underwritten and don't really have clear characters defined for them um, and, and that aren't given the chance to uh, develop relationships with, with other characters. So Mad Mickelson does a, a good job as uh, as Galen uh, so as, as uh, uh, Felicity Jones' uh, father. The uh, uh, Orson Krennic, the actor who, whose name I can't remember, the, the Imperial guy, gives a very good performance um, as someone who's, who's morally conflicted but also driven by ambition, although again that sort of falls apart in the last third. Uh, Diego Luna gives a fair enough performance with a very underwritten, inconsistent and... Uh, undeveloped character. Uh, Felicity Jones' acting is good enough. Um, the lines she's given are shit. Her character's undeveloped, but she does some quite good sort of physical acting in the way that she, she stands and, and moves. Um, I thought Riz Ahmed as the uh, Imperial pilot who brings news of the uh, of the Death Star plans from Galen did a, a good job he's clearly his character is, is clearly very underwritten and he's clearly doing a lot of work with it even though we're not given any reason to connect with him in particular 
So they were good performances. What I what I liked particularly and I thought was going to be a saving grace of the film but ended up not being was the uh, the cinematography. I liked particularly the cinematography uh, of the the early part of the first half hour or so, um, particularly with with landscapes, especially particularly real landscapes. The problem is that the the shitty plot, the boring characters, and kind of fantasy elements kept getting in the way of the landscape. And to an extent some of that is back at the end in the final uh, battle. Uh, but again, the film is just loud and obnoxious and aggressively stupid. Um, I can't emphasise enough how much of a shit we do not give about these characters. Uh, and it's a problem. It, 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 it starts out as a problem and it remains a problem throughout the film. Um, and yes, the more I think about it, the more this shows signs of in in interference. Um, unusually, because it's, it's not something I, 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 I consider because I'm not particularly interested in, in conventional plot or conventional narrative in, in my own writing or in most of the films that I watch. I like things that, uh, that break down conventional par uh, pieties of, of screenwriting, things that don't have uh, three-act structure, things that don't have character arcs, things where perhaps even characters are, are not sort of particularly dif differentiated. I enjoy that that sort of uh, experimental or or non mainstream uh, ways of uh, ways of approaching film, but I, it 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 occurred to me that there was a very simple series of fixes that could make this a much more affecting film. So. Uh, Something that, that, that I've, I've been kind of improvising in my head over the last um, two or three days is, is the structure of the film more or less like this. So, in the first... I'm going to break it down sort of mostly into chunks of about 20 minutes. So the first 20 minutes of the film, we start on, on the planet where we... Uh, where we come to... Work. In, in the film where there's the uh, sort, of, sort of like in the second act of the film where the uh, Jedi Temple is. Now what I've done is I've removed a number of characters, I've amalgamated some and I've also re radically reduced the number of, of locations. This becomes more of a kind of intense family drama than a, than a war film but there's still plenty of, of, of scope for action. So the planet that Jin starts on where her father lives and the planet with the Jedi Temple with the uh, Kyber crystals uh, are, on one, are on one planet. So we start with a fairly intimate setup. We start, w we start with, the, with the Jedi Temple and so we have Donnie Yen's character and we have uh, Jiang Wen's character. Um, now, Jiang Wen, as far as I can tell, is kind of a mercenary slash rebel in the in, in Rogue One. In, in in my rewrite, he would be like Donnie Yen, a guardian of the temple. So they're people who are not force users, but they're kind of believers in in the force. Now, for Jiang Wen's character that is going to be unproblematic. So at this point he's not armed, he doesn't have his big gun, he's not uh, he's not part of the rebellion. He he just has this job and he goes about it unproblematically. Donnie Yen, like in the uh, in the in the actual film, is suffering a crisis of faith. He he believes he wants to believe, but he doesn't and he seems to have some element of force powers. He's but he's not a Jedi, he's never going to be a Jedi. 
but he he trains he, he but he struggles with his faith he he's okay and we establish this in conversations between him and Jiang Wen and also with with Galen Erso. Galen and his family come to town for it's it's a let's say it's a it's a minor provincial city. They come they 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 live in the city. Galen Erso works for the Empire. This is there there's a small occupation of the um, by the Empire of this city and particularly of the Jedi Temple simply because of the Kyber crystals. Now at this point there's only a small amount of them. But also the Empire wants the kind of spiritual as well as the the, the temporal power and the the Jedi Temple offers some degree of, of spiritual authority or, or, or so they think. And, and Galen sort of more out of tradition than anything, goes there. And he, he knows, he's friends with uh, Donna Yen, and, and to an extent with uh, uh, Jiang, Jiang Wen. And so they, they meet, they meet sometimes at the temple, sometimes they meet at uh, Galen's house, and there, there are talks, there are discussions about, uh, about faith and about the force, and there are discussions about, at, at least as far as he's able, about the project that uh, that Galen is working on, which at this time seems like a a mobile a mobile outpost. It's it's still a space station, and we know that it's going to turn out to be the Death Star. But he's saying it's it's simply a sort of defensive outpost. It'll never. It's unlikely to ever be used in war, and, it, and if it was, it would be very much in the background, it would be there, it would give the alert, Imperial forces would come in and then it would be withdrawn. <clears throat> but we become aware that he's he's torn over his work and about the potential for this to be uh, an, an offensive installation. He's uh, an engineer, an architect, that gives him an interest to be, that gives him a reason to be interested uh, in, in the in the temple beyond just simple tradition. He, he's, he's interested in the way that it's, it's structured and how it looks and how the, the spiritual and temporal power of, of the Jedi is, is expressed through the... or was expressed through the building. His specialism is life support systems, uh, air supply, waste disposal, uh, power sources, that side of things. So he doesn't have much connection with uh, the offensive capabilities, defensive capabilities, um, any any of the other aspects of the of, of the uh, putative Death Star. And it's it's clear that, that the sort of different functions are sort of sit with different teams. So that nobody has the whole picture, nobody knows particularly what it's intended for, and that that makes his his blindness, in a sense, more forgivable. And we also see scenes, um, perhaps just one or two, between uh, Galen and uh, the, uh, the the imperial officer in in charge of this project. Um, Whose whose name I've forgot, uh, Krennic, uh, with, with Krennic. So that can all be done in fairly short scenes over the first twenty minutes. In the second twenty minutes, we we get we 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 kick things off with. Uh, there's been a, maybe people just say it. Maybe this is one of those few things that people just tell us in this that there's been rising tension there are some questions about this uh this this mobile outpost the the what will turn out to be death star there is then there there's there are also some increased mining activities or or exploratory mining activities being carried out by by the empire one of those mining facilities is attacked by 
by terrorists, by members of the Empire. There's a big explosion, a big battle. Lots of people are killed, and in the aftermath, there's a, a clampdown. Imperial forces are increased, there are increased patrols, and the temple in particular is taken over and a lot of people are expelled. Some people, some people choose to stay. Jiang Wen chooses to stay. He's got a, a relatively uncomplicated life. Donnie Yen, this is a, a real crisis point for him. His, his faith in the force has been really, has been really knocked. And at the same time, uh, Galen Erso is really not happy with the job. He's 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 been uh, he's been sidelined a little recently. He, Krennic doesn't doesn't trust him all that much, even though he's one of the best at, at, at what he does. So he he and Donnie Yen both. Uh, leave the city. They they move to the to the outskirts. So there might be an argument with with Krennic. Krennic saying don't go too far to 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 Galen Erso. You know I may need to call on you. And they take up small holdings. There's farms. So uh, Galen and his family, uh, Young Jin, his wife, and perhaps some some droids have one uh, small holding farm. And Donnie Yen, uh, occasionally helped by Jiang Wen, but with droids and also with help from Galen, has has a neighbouring farm. And so we get to see some of Jin's life in this, and we see discussions between uh, Donnie Yen and, and Galen Erso, uh, in which we learn that the empi Empire is is mining for uh, kyber crystals which are needed for this mobile outpost for some reason <clears throat> and that they found a rich seam near near the uh, Jedi temple and this has really been a, a, a pretext to take control of this, this supply to find it, locate the supply of crystals and to take control of it and so things continue like that. We can have some, some of that, that beautiful uh, cinematography uh, that I was talking about before. And then, toward the end of this 20 minutes, uh, Jiang Wen uh, turns up. He's left. He's left the Jedi Temple. He's learned something about this uh this this mobile uh outpost he's he's learned that there are rumors that it's going to be a very powerful offensive weapon and, and this is why exactly why those kyber crystals are needed he comes to donnie yen they rush to to galen erso uh and galen says well we we need to get this this information out um to to the rebels and perhaps to to anyone else who's interested at that point the empire who 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 now knows something is up send a patrol out they come in really all guns blazing into uh in, into galen's farm in the initial confusion jin's mother is is killed jin runs and hides Um, now, the, the 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 three men are sort of facing a small force of of, of imperials who are sent out. They they come into the in, into the into the compound into the farm. The three men don't really offer they they offer some token resistance, but they they end up splitting up. Galen remains and is captured and is taken back. Because the Empire, apart from everything else, wants him to resume his work. Jiang Wen 
flees in one direction. In the other direction, Don Yan finds Jin and takes her. So we've now got a, a real set of, of tight relationships established. We know the relationship, whether they're lovers, friends, um, close compatriots, between uh, Donnie Yen and Jiang Wen. We have a strong relationship between Jin and her father. We have a relationship b between uh, her father Galen Erso and uh, Krennic. And everyone has conflicts within themselves, conflicts between themselves and people with whom they have relationships. So it's a tight group of people. We know what their motivations are. We know what, what they feel ambivalent about. We know we're starting to understand what the stakes are. So for the next... 20 or so minutes, we, we see Jin growing up. She's with, with Donnie Yen. Yeah, they're on the run. They're, they're going from place to place. We, we, can have, we can have some action scenes where, they, where they're perhaps begging or where they're committing robbery and they get discovered and attacked. And in between, we can see scenes where they talk to each other, where he trains her. She has less faith in, faith in the force than, than, than he does, but he teaches her how to carry herself, how to use weapons, how to defend herself, how to at least convey a sense of authority, and gives her some sense of what the force is. And we can see that he has some, some minor force powers, although he still is questioning. And again, Jin has a sort of ambivalent relationship. To, to both this uh, and to and, and to both the empire and, and the rebellion she she's seen the good and, and bad of, of both sides so they you know she she grows up we, we see sort of essentially the next kind of 10 years we, we follow that that trajectory we can also have hints that occasionally, they're able to get messages through the Jedi temples to uh, Jiang Wen or from Jiang Wen, and then occasionally, again, using the same route to and, and from Galen Erso, but they're always brief and innocuous. So we, there's a sense that there's still that interconnection. These people still know and trust each other. And that, that sense of these people still having some minor contact and still having a reason to trust each other and know that the other is alive is important and it's something that's missing from the from the actual film. This sequence of 20 minutes comes to an end when again they they when in, in this case Jin and and Donnie Yen get a message that they, they need to come back to their home planet. Um, Jiang Wen is, uh, is back there and, and so is uh, and so is Ga Galen Erso. In fact, no. Um, no, Galen Erso isn't. He doesn't need to be. Jiang Wen is, is there. And he's expecting a message from uh, from Galen Erso, so they they come back to this now very heavily militarized planet, and they they meet up with Jiang Wen, who says he's expecting this message. Uh, he's essentially expecting a package uh, from from someone which they need to get to the rebellion. He he knows. He knows the rebels. He trusts them. But he doesn't feel that he's going to be able to do it himself. His his presence will be, you know, he, his presence is known about, and he'll be missed if he. If if he, sort of heads off to meet the rebels and and. 
the rebels can only be here for a very limited period of time. So now we have a, a kind of ticking clock for the last half hour. <coughs> Excuse me. So they get the they they get the package. They see there's, there's, there's there are two things on it. There's data and there's a message from from Galen. And Galen's message is essentially first thing. This uh, mobile outpost is a massive offensive weapon. I haven't seen all the details, but it can probably destroy a small planet. Uh, this is what we've been working on for, for a couple of decades now. It's almost ready to go. Um, and it, it's going to be a, uh, a, a very dangerous thing. We need to prevent this if possible. And... And what I've done is I've managed to put in a weakness. I've, I've left not only an exposed exhaust port, but once you get a missile into that exhaust port, then and 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 then detonate it, you will start a chain reaction which will take out the whole station. The Empire don't know about this. They know that I'm. They suspect that I or someone else am aware that this is a weapon and they're aware that there are leaks of information and that the Emperor and that the, the rebels are beginning to piece together details. Now I I can give you from memory basic schematics of the exhaust systems and the the, the systems that I've been working on and I can tell you visually what the major offensive and defensive capabilities are of this station, but I can't give you all of that detail and those schematics are then attached and he's, he also has a personal message for for Jin and a personal message thanking um thanking Donnie Yen so we can have that that emotional moment uh, Donnie Yen and, and Jiang Wen are, are are briefly reunited but uh, now Jin and, and Donnie Yen and uh, another guy, this could be uh, someone from the temple, it could be a, a, a rebel, now have to make their way out quietly and head across perhaps to where the, uh, where the farms were, or near, near there, somewhere familiar, to rendezvous with the rebels. They've got a, clicking t a ticking clock to do so. Um, you could ask why they're, they're simply not broadcasting. You could say that a lot of the, 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 you know, the cloud, the equivalent of the internet, the equivalent of the cloud, and other electronic communications are heavily monitored and controlled, and it, it would be simply picked up, and they don't want the Empire to know what information they have. It's just vague plans relating to the Death Star. So they they make their way out of the city and and, and start on their journey. Now, in the meantime, we can have uh, Jiang Wen shortly after this is is captured and and tortured because people don't trust him and uh, he refuses to speak then th the Empire perhaps even Krennic having been forced into this situation bring out uh, Galen Erso and say well we we will we will kill or, or torture your friend if, uh, you know, if 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 you don't tell us, and and Jiang Wen uh, stalls for as as long as possible, and eventually it's it's perhaps it's perhaps Galen who says, I've I. You know, stop! I've given them. I've given them plans 
for the Death Star. They're in the hands of the rebels now. There's nothing you can do about this. At, at which point Krennic is like, well, okay, you're coming with me. There can then be, perhaps coincidentally, uh, a, a, a rebel attack as a, as a diversion, an attack on the city. In the confusion, Jiang Wen escapes, but Galen Erso is dragged to a ship by Krennic, and Krennic and a small band of Imperials chase out, chase out. Perhaps they, they, they fan out looking for traces of Jin and Donnie Yan and, and where they might have gone. And, and perhaps Krennic and a, and a small group of troops either find him or, some, or someone calls him and he joins that small force uh, pursuing after them. Now, as far as he knows, they don't have much of a plan, but he... he but Krennic calls reinforcements, so I think it got more urgent. The reinforcements, you know, they, they might, they'll be about 10 minutes behind, perhaps. So there's a very limited amount of time for Jin and Donnie Yen to hand the plans over uh, to the rebels. Now, in, in the meantime, perhaps by, by taking over an, an Imperial transport, a sort of single single person patrol vehicle. Um, Jiang Wen has managed to catch up to to Jin and Donnie, and so they're bearing down. They're very close to the uh, where the rebels are, are hiding. Suddenly, there's a massive explosion. And because they're quite close, both Jin Erso and Jiang Wen are fairly badly injured because he's he's further ahead and he's, because of his, he, he was more aware because of his heightened hearing. Donnie Yen is able to get under cover and, and is less injured. But now all three uh, are separated. Jiang Wen perhaps has got a very damaged leg. He's not able to stand um, because he's... Uh, because of the, the the guy that he he ambushed earlier, he now has a, a big gun like he does in the uh, in, in in the actual Rogue One, and he's able to crawl to cover and he's able to put down a a, a suppressing fire to perhaps give the other two a, an opportunity. Jin is less is less injured. She's possibly lost an eye. She's deafened. She can't hear anything. She's blood coming from her ears. She's traumatised and, and in shock. Donnie Yen has to choose between the two. Who does he help? Does he help Jin, who has the plans, and, and risk drawing attention to her? Or does he go to help his friend and give Jin the opportunity to, to escape? And these are two people. This is a, 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 a kind of crucial conflict who does he help does he help his his old friend possible lover or does he help his adoptive daughter um and at, at this point jiang wen gestures to him to 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 go to go to jin so he he rushes over to to her grabs her and starts helping her to to run and move on and, and, and through, through gestures indicates that she needs to continue the mission, she needs to, to finish this. Suddenly there's another uh, an intensification of fighting and, and Donnie Yen uh, can see that uh, Jiang Wen is about to be overwhelmed. So this is a... a, a, a this is, this is something he, he can't ignore and he knows that uh, that Jin is almost there so he, he encourages her, he, he pushes her on and then heads back in a very determined manner rather like the, the, the beach scene from the actual Rogue One but here he's he's able to overcome his ambiguity about the force, he's driven by 
He's driven by love. He's trying to protect Jin. He's also hoping to protect, for a little while at least, Jiang Wen. And he's trying to help the cause. He's, he's found a purpose. And, and, and through this, and through the other sort of family connections and relationships, we can see that the motivating force of, of this group of people is, is a kind of love and, and togetherness. And we actually care about these people. So he's able to deflect... Uh, beams. He's able to perhaps send laser beams back, and and to just using his stick, be be a threat to this in, imperial force. And he 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 makes it back, and they both 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 Donnie Yen and Yang Wen are overwhelmed and and killed, and their their deaths this time have actual weight we you know we we care about every single single death in this we've got reasons to care about these people we see what their interconnections are Jin to to reach the rebels will have to pass slightly out of sight of the imperial troops she can then hand over the plans and she can then come back into sight without any indication that she's handed off the plans. So that's what she does. She passes out of sight, she throws the plans to to the waiting rebels. She then picks up a stone that looks similar something. Or, or you know, has something that looks similar to the plans. That she can then be 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 shown stuffing into a jacket as she comes back into sight of the Imperials. And so she she continues running she she notices that uh, or perhaps she she even sees uh Jiang Wen and and Donnie Yen getting overwhelmed and then the imperials are, are on her but they don't they they don't kill her because they don't want to to necessarily risk the plans <coughs> and and because they don't want to particularly kill gratuitously. We've got Orson Krennic here. He has links to, to, to this, this family. But, you know, his hand has been forced. So he, he lands and has Galen Erso dragged out and, and threatened and he's appealing with, uh, and, and uh, Galen is appealing with his daughter not to hand over the plans. And and she, but she, but she does. She she hands over the plans and then reaches for a blaster. She's cut down. Galen is also killed. Krennic realises very quickly, uh, just at the moment as the rebel ship finally takes off and, and shoots off into the distance, realises that what he's got aren't the actual plans and that they've been handed over. And at this point the reinforcements arrive and are sent after the rebel ship, but they're, they're, they're not close enough behind to catch up to it. And the film ends there, so we've reduced we've reduced the characters the number of characters a lot. We've reduced the number of settings a lot. We don't have the the space battles, but we've got a lot of battle and fight sequences. We've got a lot of intense sequences, but we've also got a lot more character development for those characters that are are in this script. We have we have a core of of five characters that we follow and that we're interested in. We have Jin, we have a father Galen, we have Donnie Yen's character, we have Jiang Wen's character, and we have Orson Krennic. And his role, he's not sort of apparently sort of defence chief, although with a couple of other people who seem to have responsibility for the same thing for the entire empire, apparently, in, in Rogue One here, he's specifically 
in control of the project to get the Death Star built. And he has his own ambivalence, but he's at the end of the day he knows the risk to himself and his family and his 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 job and his life. But uh yeah, I, I think I think my my rewriting of this would be uh, you would care a lot more and you, you lose a lot of characters. You lose um you lose Diego Luna's character and it's no great loss. You lose uh, Alan Tudyk's robot, and yeah, we've got some good moments, but that's no loss. You lose Darth Vader. That doesn't matter. Um, you lose uh, Forrest Whitaker's character again. Not a big loss. Um, he's a, he's an actor that I think is really great, but he he he's, he's not necessary to the story. Um, and you also lose uh, Riz Ahmed's character, the uh, the Imperial pilot. Uh, it's a shame because a lot of those people are are good actors who are doing good jobs with very underwritten roles in Rogue One. But I I think there was a case there for a much much tighter movie. I mean, my my movie would probably be somewhere in the region of of an hour and a half. Limited number of sets, limited number of uh, set pieces, limited number of cast. Um, but it would feel much more urgent and you would care much more when the characters die. Um, so yeah, that's my, uh, that's my, my Rogue One, One review. Uh, if you're really desperate to see it. Go and see it. It's it's the cinematography is good. Some of the performances are good, and some of the action sequences are fine, even if they, even if some of them, are are completely out of place and don't really need to be in the film. There's way too much fan service, and the story uh, suffers as a consequence. So yeah, that's it. Um, and well. See you next time, whatever that is. Bye.